Hello everyone and welcome to Control Systems Analysis and Design. Uh, today we're going to do a problem uh, that's a rotational mechanical system that has gears inside of it. And each one of these gears also happens to have uh, a dampening associated with it uh, along with the gear ratio. So if you haven't seen anything like that. And then we also have a spring down here which is attached to a wall. So uh, what you have to do with gears is when you ever, whenever you have a gear situation it's basically just a transfer, direct transference of the energy and torque and everything else related to it of impedance. So since this can't move independently, you're able to combine gear trains into a single system if you haven't been introduced to this. So what we're going to do is there's a couple of formulas that you can use uh, for reflecting an impedance like mass down into the next stage of the gear train. And that's what we're going to do. Now the, now the question that, that you have to do ask when you're working with something like this is, okay, how do I reduce? Do I reduce upwards this direction, or do I reduce downwards this direction, or do I reduce inwards? Well, normally, if this was just like two systems, you would reduce downwards towards the wall. If there was just, if you just had this, say. But since we have three, it gets kind of hairy going down this direction because you get a lot of fractions and uh, numbers to have to deal with and variables to keep track of. So usually, in this kind of situation, it's easier to move towards the center and just eliminate these gear trains by bringing this impedance up into here and this impedance down into here. This also is, there's also a clue given to you because we're given in the problem theta 2 right here. The fact that they only give us theta 2 and don't say like, oh, well, there's a theta 1 up here and there's a theta 3 down here, uh, that means that you're basically trying to go towards this theta 2, which is kind of a hint that the problem uh, may give you. But you can always take this and solve all the way down to here. It's just kind of a hairy system. So I'm going to take it and solve in, in two directions. Okay. So uh, I've given you the, the value of like mass, J, is equal to 2. I didn't put any units on these. I'm hoping you guys know what all the units are. And the units just kind of clutter up the drawing, so I haven't used them here. But hopefully you're familiar enough with the system that you kind of know what the units are. And it, the units really aren't relevant because we're trying to find a transfer function for this. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is translate this impedance and this torque and this dampening through this gear train in order to combine it with this one. Okay. So we're going to find torque equivalent, which is basically the torque that would be applied right here if you took this torque and brought it down through this gear train. And the way you work that is T1 n2 all over n1. And how you can look at this is basically as destination over source. We're coming from n1 and we're going to uh, n2. So that's how you can look at that if you're transferring something. If you're going backwards, well then they would reverse and you'd have n1 over n2, which makes sense because if you multiply this back out to find out what t1 would be going back here, you just reverse this fraction. Okay, so we have T equivalent going right here. And I'll, I'll draw a picture of this uh, when we're all done doing the transference. The torque equivalent. Now I want to find the D equivalent, which is transferring this, the dampening of this gear through the gear train into the dampening in this system right here. So D equivalent is going to equal D1 for a dampening and uh, spring constants and masses are all considered impedances. And when you do an impedance, you still do destination over source for the uh, gear ratio over N1, but then you square it. So when you're working with an impedance, you multiply uh, the original impedance times the gear ratio, destination over source, the first gear, where it's coming from, N1, to where it's going, N2, and then you square it, and that's your damping ratio. And now in order to get the equivalent on this side, we're basically splitting this down the center here, in case you're not aware. Uh, I'm going to do this transference up here and do a different D equivalent and stuff. But the D equivalent on this side is going to be D1, which is, or D equivalent, which is D1 plus, plus this, plus D2, which is adding this right here. We don't change anything with this because it's not going through the gears. It's already a part of the system. So you transfer D1 through and then add it to D2. And that's how you get the equivalent for this side of the system. Okay, now we want to get J equivalent, which is JE, where we're transferring this mass down through the gear train. And it's exactly the same thing. You've got J1, N2, all over N1, 
squared. So what we did was we took that and then we multiplied it by the gear ratio and since it's an opinion, we squared it. Okay. And then once it's down there, you will add it on to this J2 also. But actually I'm gonna I'm gonna define this J E like this. I'm gonna add an arrow for the J E on this side that we just brought down. And then on this one, I'll define it as an arrow of this direction or something like that. Okay. So now moving on to this side, we have a spring that's moving through here. Well, the spring is basically considered a part of this entire system. So you can basically pretend that it's directly attached to the gears too, because there's a solid system or solid bar you could say attached right to this spring. So a spring again is a uh, impedance. So in order to get Ke, we're going to say the spring constant equivalent, moving it up here, it's going to equal K original, we'll call, call this K1, times destination over source. So we're going to N3 from N4, N4 to N3, and since it's an impedance, we square it. And that's your Ke going into the system now. And then to get Je, and I'm going to draw an arrow this direction, Je for this side, you're going to get equal J3 of N3 all over N4 squared. Alrighty, and then for DE, this side, I'm actually going to change this one back here. I add this to uh, D2, but I don't want to do that quite yet because it, it can be confusing. So I'm just going to hold off for a second because it'll make this make more sense later on. Uh, the D2 is a part of the system. It's okay. You can add it in here, but it's not necessary at this point. So I'm just going to leave it off and just say the dampening that's brought in from the system. Okay. So then DE is equal to <clears throat> D3 times N3 all over N4. And it is squared. And what we did right there is this gear has a dampening uh, factor associated with it. We go from this gear to that gear with a gear ratio. Therefore, that dampening is added in. Okay, so now what we have is we have this single bar now, which has a JE. It has a, uh, I'm going to draw it like this, a DE, adding in the dampening as a symbol you may recognize, a damping equivalent, and we have a K equivalent. And we also have a torque applied. Okay. Now this uh, system is a, a little bit misleading because having a dampener right here and then this bar in between here or anything along these lines really, you can say, well, there's an in-between mass right here. No, not really. In this case, we know that we've compressed everything into a single system. So there's no halfway points in here or independent masses that you have to imagine when you're making the equation. If any of you were confused about that. If you're not confused by that, then fine. Just go ahead and work it like that. Alright, so what we have to do now that we have JE, I'm going to redefine JE now to include the center system. So we have JE is equal to J1 N2 over N1 squared, which is this one that we brought in from the first math plus J3 uh, times N3 over N4 squared that we brought in from this side coming into here plus the J associated with J2 which was just sitting there in the center to the very beginning. You add those all up and you have the equivalent uh, impedance of mass. So that's all you got to do. Now for the damping equivalent, DE, we've got D1 times N2 all over N1, which is this one that we created for this side, of squared, plus, coming in from this side, we've got D3 of N3 all over N4 squared, plus the dampening that was on this gear, that was already in this system, plus uh, D2. All right. And now for uh, K equivalent, uh, there was no spring in here in the center at all. If there was, this problem would have been a lot more complicated. Uh, KE is going to be equal to K1, N3, all over N4 squared. Cool. So now we have the equivalent values of all of these. Oh, and TE 
is still T1 N2 over N1. When you're transferring a uh, torque or <laughs> uh, rotation distance like theta through, you don't have to do the square. This is only for impedances, remember. Okay, so now we have to do a free body diagram of this system in order to define uh, what all is acting on it. And now it's actually a very simple system because we just have a dampener spring with a torque applied and a mass in there. And hopefully all of you know how to do this. You apply a torque this direction. I just want to so you apply a torque this direction, but then you have a resistance uh, due to inertia of JE times uh, S squared theta 2. S squared is acceleration. Theta 2 is just within reference to it. Oh, because we have theta 2 right here. I never drew that up in the free body diagram right here. But JE, so force times acceleration is equal to inertia, basically, or the force due to inertia, acceleration. All right, the force from the, uh, the impedance from the spring is KE times uh, theta 2, because it's just a distance. Uh, KX is the equation that that comes from. And then for dampening, it's based on velocity. So we've got D equivalent times S, the first derivative, basically, theta 2. And now we have something that we can create an entire equation for. So if we do it like this, then we have T is equal to uh, JES squared theta 2 uh, plus KE theta 2 plus DES theta 2. And that's the equation. Now, taking that equation and actually subbing in all the mass that we have up here, we've got uh, T1. N2 all over N1 is equal to J1 N2 over N1 squared plus J3 N3 over N4 squared plus J2. All of this in parentheses by S squared times theta 2, well, actually times S squared. I'm going to factor out the thetas right now. Because all of these are multiplied by theta 2, I can just take it to the outside. Plus, KD. Actually, I'm going to reverse these right here and uh, do dampening first because it has a longer equation. Damping. D1, N2, D3, N3, all over N4. Oops. Oh, might be helpful if you can see that. Plus D2. So this is real easy stuff. If you want to skip ahead, go ahead and skip ahead 30 or a minute or so. All right, and then plus K1 N3 all over N4 squared. Then if you put this all in parentheses, you can go by theta 2. And that's your complete equation. And now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and sub in values here. So J1 was 2, N2 was 12, N1 was 4 squared. J3 had a value of 16. N3 was 4. N4 was 16 squared. J2 had a value of 1. S squared. And then we've got plus D1. D1 had a value of 1. Uh, N2 again was 12 all over 4 squared plus D3 was 32 times N3 4 all over N4 16 squared plus <coughs> um, what was D2 times 2 S plus K1 which was equal to 64 N3 4 over 16 squared Theta 2. And, if you, and this, you know, since this is in respect to theta 2, you can set it equal to uh, T of S, which is equal to 3. Oh, T. It's all equal to T times. I forgot about this ratio up here. I'm sorry. Uh, T uh, 1, which is. Is that given to us? That was not given to us. T1. 4, 12 over 4. Okay, so now we have t and theta 2. In order to get our transfer function, we have to have 
theta 2 all over t. And if you want to do with respect to s, that's fine. I don't normally do that, but if you want to, that's great. Um, this is output over input is equal to, if you solve out all these numbers up here, you should end up with 3 all over 20 s squared plus 13s plus 4. And that is your transfer function. So what we've done is we've taken a rotational system with gears, uh, solved for all the gear ratios in order to find the equivalent impedances and torques. Then we created the equation for a single system, basically. Single system. And then we went through, solved the equation as we normally would using a three body diagram, solved out all the values, plugged the values in that we were given, and then solved for the transfer function, which is output over input. And this is what we get. So that's how you go from a rotational system to a transfer function.